So we've got a 2018 DAF CF MX11 to do today. I was here last week and put an injector in it on number one, but unfortunately I noticed the camshaft on the inlet was worn out. So we've got some parts. We're gonna get into this now, change the inlet camshaft. Oh, it's the hands-free kit. <laughs> so we've got a couple of bits to take off now. We're gonna take this cover off here. We're gonna get this air box off as well. And then we can get into taking the rocker cover off as well. So uh, we'll crack on with this now. So we've got our rocker cover off and our intermediate plate or whatever you want to call that off now and we've just got access to the cams, got all the wiring harness out of here and I'll just show you why we're changing the inlet cam. As you can see all our followers are damaged, that's our cam lobe there, more follower damage there on the rocker levers and that one. So what we'll do now is time this engine up, we're going to get our timing marks round from here up to there. Hopefully this will be TDC. I'm gonna nip underneath now, time that up under there on TDC and we'll go from there. So I've just popped down here to take this plate off to put our uh, Truck Tech UK timing tool in here, but the plate isn't here. Someone's uh, left it off. So this will fit in here. So we've got our timing tool in here to turn the engine over. We'll just take this cover off, which is an inspection plate and we can see if it's a TDC. So now we've arrived at TDC, hopefully you can see this, just up there, TDC. So this is what our top end looks like now, we've got holes at the top pointing at 12 o'clock and we've also got little dimples in the camshaft, hopefully you can see these on the gear there. There'll be one here as well, but I'll show you on the new gear now. So this is what the timing marks actually look like. We'll just turn this through. There we go. So that's at the top at 12 o'clock. And then we've got these marks here and there. They are what line up on the cylinder head straight. That's how we know the camshafts are in the right position to be changed. There are marks for the fuel pump camshaft, but um, well, you look for yourself. There's no way I'm fitting in there to get to that, so we'll just have to wing it, I suppose, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So that's all our rocker shafts out now. We're just left with our cam shafts. Hopefully you can see the timing marks a bit better now. We'll just zoom in. So there's one there. One just there. And obviously these point to 12 o'clock. So we'll get the camshafts out now. We'll get the bearings changed because I'd be stupid not to change them, wouldn't I? And uh, we'll get it all back together. So this is our top end we've got to work on now. We've got uppers and lowers to fit here. How do I know that? One says upper, one says lower, and apparently you knock and welly them in. So they must be fitting instructions for these bearings. So we'll get these bearings put in their caps and in the cylinder head and we'll crack on. We'll prep the cylinder head now. We'll clean up all around this mating surface here with brake cleaner and a rag. We'll change our bearings out of here, get all them wiped out before we oil the new bearings to go in. So let's crack on with this. So we've cleaned up all around here now. Some of the bearings have come out with the camshaft. We've got one, two, three, four, five still in. So we'll just knock these out now and round and then we can put our new ones in. There we go. I'll go and get our new bearings and get them put in and oiled. So we put some engine oil in this bag with the bearings. They're all nice and oily now. All right, we'll do the uppers now. 
Thank you very much. Just give my bag a jiggle. Thank you, camshaft. So this is the advantage of keeping everything in a methodical order. We can just flip these on their side and we know this is the bearing that we're changing here. So we'll get all these flipped out and changed before we put them all back in later. So that's all our camshaft bearings done for our inlet. We'll get all this reassembled. Lubing shafts. Right, let's drop our new camshaft in. That looks right to me. There we go. Happy days. So our new camshafts in, we've got them to put on in a minute. We're just going to change all these rocker arms now for new ones. So we've got all our new inlet rocker arms here now. We'll get these changed off this rocker shaft. You can just see how badly damaged and worn these are. that's ready to go on the truck. Tony. So I've just run all these in loose now. They're certainly nowhere near the speck of torque that we're gonna be doing them to. And so we've got 14 to torque along here. These are the camshaft retaining bolts. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 to do first. So we'll start with them. And that's all of them. Now we've got to angle torque all of them again through 60 degrees in the same sequence. Best not forget these parts for the exhaust brake. Let's get them fitted now. I'll give you these. Stop at 30. Oh. 
So I've got to go under the truck now and turn this over from TDC to 1 and 6 on the flywheel. Then we can set either cylinders 1 or cylinder 6 and then we can do the exhaust brake on either cylinder 1 or cylinder 6. But I'll explain more about that in a minute. So we're at 1 and 6 on the flywheel now. What does this mean? Well it means that number 6 here or number 1 at the front will be ready for valve clearances to be adjusted or checked. Now as you can see this rocker lever is loose and so is the exhaust rocker lever. So both of these valves are closed, that means we can adjust these. Now if we look at the opposite cylinder, which is why it says 1 and 6, you'll see that this inlet is down, our valve springs are compressed, and this is now open. So we won't be adjusting this cylinder on this rotation. But what we will be adjusting is the exhaust brake clearance here on cylinder 6. This is 4.15 millimeters gap here that needs to happen. And then we've got our inlet and exhaust here, this needs to be 0 0.40 and this needs to be 0 0.65 on a cold engine. So we'll adjust this here, we'll adjust this exhaust brake and then we'll go round to 2 and 5. Right. So that's about got enough drag on there, now just nip it down a touch more in. Right, come off a touch, off a bit more. Okay, that's great, hold it there. There we go, right, come off with the screwdriver. Lovely. Right, we'll do the inlet now. Just a bit of drag on that now. Yep, brilliant. Lovely. So we've adjusted cylinder one now and our exhaust brake on number six. I'm gonna pop under here, turn it over to two and five and then we'll repeat the process again. Is number two open? Is number five open, etc. Well, that was one and six. That's two and five. five. Yeah, two and five's just coming up now. But yeah, two and five Yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. She's told me which one we're already doing. So we've travelled around to 2 and 5 now, so I'll just show you these. So this is cylinder 5, play there, if we look at cylinder 2, well this inlet's down isn't it, so we won't be doing this one because the valve springs are compressed. So 5 will be having the valve clearances changed, cylinder 2 will be having our exhaust brake clearance checked. So we've just done the valve clearances on cylinder 5 and the exhaust brake on cylinder 2. Now we're going to turn the engine over to three and four, and then we can work out from there whether it's three or four we're doing. So back under the truck. On the turn again, off to cylinders three and four again. I was right. Of course you were right. Why would you be wrong? You're a woman. <laughs> Three and four. We're doing cylinder three. So we're doing cylinder three. There you go, everyone. We're doing cylinder three. So we're at three and four now, believe it or not. So we're looking at this one and this one. As you can see, hopefully this is an even better comparison for you. This is down. This is up. So with this one compressed and we can't adjust this, we'll be adjusting our valve clearances on this cylinder, which is cylinder three and exhaust brake valve clearance on cylinder four. So off we go again. So that was cylinder three. We've just adjusted the valve clearances on and our exhaust brake on cylinder four. Now we're gonna start the process all over again and go back to one and six, but obviously this time we'll be doing cylinder six. Then we'll be do... So we've just done... Cylinder three. Yep. Uh, and the exhaust brake on cylinder four. Yep. And we're gonna go now back to one and six and do cylinder six. Then we're going to go to two and five and do cylinder two. Then finally to three and four and do cylinder four. There you go. You've heard it from 
Van mechanic. Van mechanic. There you go. Yeah, she doesn't do don't... trucks. She does vans. And yeah. even she knows what's going on. So there you go. She's even better than me at doing this. And if you want to hear more from Amy, she'll be in Auto Mechanica in Birmingham, NEC from the 3rd to the 5th of June on the IMI stand. So we've done all our valve clearances now and our exhaust brake valve clearances. The only thing left to do now is to put our wiring harness on, our new rocker cover, a new rocker cover gasket, and we'll fire it up and see what happens. So cue the time lapse. So that's our wiring harness fitted now, all the bolts are tight, we've fitted our injector wiring harness, plugs as well, and we've also tightened up our exhaust brake solenoid valves. They work on a bank of three. This solenoid here works one, two, and three, and this solenoid here works three, four, and five. I think the torque setting for these are 1.5 newton meters, not something that you'd ever want to snap. So uh, be a bit ginger with them if I were you. We'll get the gasket changed now for the rocker cover and uh, we'll get that on and hopefully get some smoke out of it. How confident am I that nothing's gonna break? Let's give it a whirl. Whee! Ta-da! Well, that's another camshaft successfully changed. On to the next job.